Hi, so welcome to a quick tutorial on Pinnacle Studio. Um, if you get your iPad up, you'll see on your front screen you are two programs here that you could use for video editing. One is iMovie, uh, which is the one that uh, Apple seem to recommend, but this one that you're going to use is Pinnacle Studio because this is much more sophisticated. It can do an awful lot more functions than iMovie can. So we'll just tap on the icon and see where we go. Okay, so here's your starter screen. Uh, all of your projects that you've already done are already indicated in the center bar here, and you can see the names are under here. In order to start a new project, it's very easy. Two things you can do. Number one, use the plus button here. Or number two, you can double tap on one of these spare center linings with the number one in. When you've tapped your new project, this is the screen that comes up. Quite simply enter the project name that you are going to use in here and click OK and it will bring you to your first screen. OK, so this is your home screen and it's worth familiarizing yourself with the layout of the program just so you can see what everything does. In the top left hand corner here we have all of your video resources. That's everything that you've got on the iPad. Over here, on the right, you have a preview screen. This allows you to preview anything that's going on on the timeline at the same time. When you enter your project name, um, this is usually the first thing that comes up. You get this little dialog box here which um, asks you if you want to rebuild your library. It sounds quite scary. The answer is yes, because all it's doing is looking for all the latest clips that you've added in the last few days, months, um, to your iPad. So the more up-to-date it is, the better. It takes a minute, maybe, but it's worth doing. However, you can get another view to this by clicking this little button up here. Now what that allows you to do is to preview individual clips. So for instance, I might select this clip over here and it will start playing in the preview window and hopefully you can see that there are some functions there that I can do straight away without even putting them onto the timeline. For instance, I can trim clips straight away. But if we return to my original view up here, that's this little one here, um, that is the, uh, the one that allows me just to view any vi videos and, uh, that are on the storyboard. So other key areas that we've got here, this is the storyboard area. If you were to drag and drop any of these clips onto here, you'll see what happens in a second. It just creates a nice little storyboard. In addition, we've got two other main areas. The first one is here. That's where all the videos themselves are displayed. And finally, we've got this area here, which consists of three different audio tracks. This is one of the big advantages over iMovie, because in iMovie you can only put one audio track, and you can't really edit it. Whereas here, we can put three different tracks. For instance, a speaking track, um, a music track, and sound effects track. And that's really useful if you want to get into some more advanced editing. Okay, so to get started, it's very easy. You select, say, a video clip from the menu on the left-hand side, and you literally drag it either into the storyboard, where it will appear as a thumbnail, or you can bring it straight down onto the timeline, where, as you can see there, we've got the whole length of it underscored over here, and you can see how long it is. Notice also that you have these little yellow pointers. That's the length of the clip. And it's quite easy just to adjust those and bring them in a little bit if you want to trim the clip that you're looking at, either from the front end or trim some off the back end. And as you can see, if I add in yet more clips over here and just drag them onto the timeline, they just populate the storyboard there like that so I've got some thumbnails and I can see what's going on. Over here in my main window I can see exactly what's going on in these video clips because the video clips on the timeline are there and wherever this arrow is that's what's going on here in the preview window. 
Now, I mentioned before that if you want to trim clips, there are these two little things at the ends, start and end, that you can basically drag inwards to exactly the point that you want. This little line down here tells you exactly where you are in the clip, so you can position that to wherever you wish. However, there's another little trick that you can do to trim a clip, which is fairly easy. Uh, what you do is you just pick on this razor symbol here. When the razor symbol comes up, you'll see this little video symbol come up. And if you were to click on that, then all it does is at this point, the yellow point here, it divides the clip into two, so that you've got two completely separate clips. So as you can see here, having pressed the razor blade, the yellow point now has divided the clip into two, and you can also see that I've now got two separate clips on the storyboard. Now this is really useful in case you want both ends of the clip, but for instance you might want to put another clip in the middle. At that point all you would need to do is select a clip and actually drag it in the middle of the two storyboard bits or in the middle of the two clips on the timeline. The final area of the program layout that we need to look at is on the left hand side here. So if I drag this in a little bit you should be able to see uh, we have a whole variety of different symbols up the left hand side. Now by default uh, it points to this video one over here uh, because it's just listing all the videos that you've got but there are several other interesting ones which I'm going to show you now. This one that we've got it on at the moment is the photos. Any photos you've got on the iPad can also be used as part of your video in exactly the same way as the videos can. Basically all you do is you select one and you drag it into the timeline. And it's that easy. And that's exactly what I've done with this photograph here. Another area that we can use is the next one down which is music. Any music you have on your iPad, very very easy, is all listed in this area here. And you can just select a single song and drag it onto the lines down here. Or you can preview it in this window here just by double, t double clicking it. As you can see from the arrow, the soundtrack that I've just dragged in has positioned itself wherever this yellow arrow is. And that's kind of the, the marker for where I want the music to begin. If you double click on any of the video clips in your timeline, a dialog box will open. This is a really useful little dialog box because there are a whole load of things that you can do to any particular clip that you're using. For a start, there is the bin symbol here that means you can just get rid of a clip that you've just put in that you don't want. Second, we have the trim function here. Remember these little yellow lines that we looked at before? They can be dragged inwards, further into a clip, or from the back end of the clip they can be dragged inwards so that you select only the exact amount of a clip that you want to include. This volume button here is really important because it is attached to any dialogue that's attached to the clip. So sometimes people don't record the dialogue particularly well and you might have to increase the volume, especially if you're using a soundtrack with it, in order to make sure that it's heard. Similarly, you can use these audio fade in and audio fade outs just to get rid of any little sounds at the start or the end of a clip that you don't want in there. The same dialog box will open if you were to double click the audio files down here. It's got fewer functions that you can do but one of the important ones is the volume here. As I said to you before if the volume of the dialogue is not particularly loud, you can either increase that or you can slide down the volume of the soundtrack that you've put in and that should enable you to get a good sound balance. Next in our menu of features uh, up here is this little lightning bolt and that's basically transitions. That's how you get from one clip to the next. 
So you can see we've got a variety of basic transitions here, but actually the basic ones are probably the ones that look most like real films. For instance, this one here is a crossfade or a cross dissolve. If you were to put it in the middle of two clips here, then what would happen is one would fade out as the other one fades in. If you were to use this one here, that fades out to black first before fading the next clip in. You can also see that there are a whole load of different types of effect that you can use, slides, pushes, etc. But they're much less commonly used. They're a little bit more gimmicky, so you might want to lay off those. The way to use those transitions, as I've said, is simply to select one and to drag it over either into the storyboard section between the two clips that you wanted, or you can drag it directly between two clips on the timeline itself. Again, notice that you've got these two yellow bars here which allow you to lengthen the transition or to make it a little bit shorter. It's completely up to you and you can control it. So if you want a longer fade to black or a longer dissolve between two clips, you can adjust the timing. Two more of our menu features to go. If we come over here, we've now got this one here. This is our montage effect, which allows you to go from one clip to another clip with some fancy graphics in between. And the further down you scroll here, the more fancy graphics you can bring in. Anytime you see a number in here, that's one of the clips that you can use. And basically, you can use up to four different clips just going from one to the other. The only way I can really explain this is to tell you to try them out and see what happens. Some of them are pretty cool. In order to use any of these montage effects, simply select them and drag them either again to the start of the storyboard or to the start of the timeline. Again, you can control with the yellow tags exactly how long they last for. And what happens is you then select up here, double tap, this little section here, and you can then write in whatever text you wish. That can be your title, it can be a subtitle, whatever you want. Double clicking the text will open this dialog box, which gives you a whole load of options, including uh, writing your text in here, uh, changing the font, changing the font color. For instance, this writing doesn't have to be white, it might be different. Uh, changing the size of it, obviously, and changing how it fits into the screen. And again, you can play around with a lot of those settings. Each time you use one of these dialog boxes, in order to finish with it, you simply press the Done button there. And as I said to you before, the further down this list you go, the more complex these montages get. So you can see we've got some neon ones, um, we've got some multi-layer mix ones, they're quite funky but you want to have a look at how to use them by just trying them out. And then we've got some tribute ones that give you some fancy titles as well. And the final area of our menu bar is this title tool, it's a little T for text. Now you've got different types, we have motion titles, these move and unfortunately, I can't show you how they work on this program, but the best thing to do is just to double-click a couple of them. If they have this little symbol up here, it means they're motion titles. If they don't, then they are standard titles down here. You can select a variety of fonts, colors. You can edit all of these. Just see how they look. Drag them again down to the timeline where you want them. Adjust them and see how they look. Finally, once you've got your movie and you've previewed it and it all sounds absolutely fine, remember that you can simply press this button at any time to preview it. We come to the rendering part, and that is over here in the top right-hand corner. This little button here allows us to render the whole thing and also to export it to whatever sort of format we want. When you press this share button, 
Uh, this is the screen that comes up and you can see a variety of different formats from video file to something you can email and these are obviously various different le levels of compression. If you have a Facebook account you can publish your videos directly to Facebook or to YouTube or you can save them as projects within Avid. For your purposes, for the best quality video, you really want to select the video file option and you'll come up with this dialog box and again, it depends how much space you've got on your iPad but the best quality video obviously will be uh, HD 720p. You've got the camera, you might as well use it. From there, the whole thing will basically export and it will end up on your camera roll on the iPad. And again, you can just re-render it and send it to anywhere that you like, including YouTube, uh, email, etc. Well, that's all. I hope you found this easy enough to follow. And just give it a go, give it a play, and you'll come up with some really cool creative results.